I am the extraordinary Hmong. Rice patty eyes, mouth full, open, filled with opium poppy seed. Hair long, black, like the Mekong. The ghost of my ancestor swimming on my back, waves breaking my spine, sinking like silver, clapping. With the poetry of Gutia to the murky depths of my buttocks, sunburnt yellow buttocks, crisp by the McDonald eating sun as I slave beneath him. I'm not sushi, I'm not takeout, and I do not have an ancient secret. Pillsbury Dough people do not ask me for the Dalai Lama's number. Cause the monks from Shaolin Temple are revolting. I don't know Jet Li, only jet lag. Will my spirit cross the ocean to be delivered to Toys R Us? But Hmong are not welcome in country clubs and corporations inside. Janitors, short order cooks, factory workers, please apply. Wax yourself on, wax yourself off. I already sound off. Don't Daniel sun me. I'm nobody's son. A nomad, sowing my seed, riding my fleece straight into your fortune cookie. Carrying more wisdom in my pocket than Plato's philosopher king. Driving down University Avenue, my future coming through the rear view. She riding steady on his steed, snapping drums, clinking gong, and an ancestor howl fills my ears with sounds of pride. It says, I'm the extraordinary Hmong. I knew that there was this desire inside of me to write a Hmong anthem, or at least my Hmong anthem, and I couldn't get the words out. And then one night, I was watching Late Night at the Apollo, um, and a young woman performed, a uh, phenomenal woman by Maya Angelou, and I thought, there you go. If Maya Angelou can say, I'm a phenomenal woman, then I can say, I'm an extraordinary Hmong. So I wrote Extraordinary Hmong in like 30 minutes, and I did some minor editing, but really, you know, when I say the ghost of my ancestor swimming on ba my back, I really do feel in that moment when I was writing that the ghosts of my ancestors were on my back, helping me tell the story of our extraordinary existence. I get really inspired when I come to the Hmong market because it's a place for Hmong people to hold on to their culture and those things that are important like the food, the clothes that are being sold here. It's also a place for the larger Minnesota community, whether you're Hmong or not, to come and find out about the Hmong people. It was believed that once upon a time, the Hmong actually had a written tradition, but because of persecution from the Chinese, that they were no longer allowed to actually write the, in their language. So what they did was they took the traditional characters and they put it in the clothes. So this character is the eyes of a tiger. So this is the character for tiger. And you see another representation of the tiger eye right here too. I remember when I was a child, my parents dressing me up in a little dress like this and taking me to the Hmong New Year in downtown St. Paul at the River Center. It's so important as we become more Americanized to still hold on to our clothes, to still hold on to our stories, our folk tales, and our history. And that's not saying that we don't want to be less American, but it's just a piece of who we are that we should find valuable, that we should hold on to. This is a traditional skirt that has been made into a bag. Now, you know, the hipster in me says that is way cool, but the traditionalist in me says, this is meant to be a skirt, why is it a bag? So things are forever changing um, in the Hmong community, and I see that change when I come here to the Hmong village. Um, and it's all good, it's all good change, because yeah, why can't we imagine something, for instance, why can't this skirt become a bag, and why can't our traditional folk tales 
become reimagined to include, you know, the landscape of Minnesota, the landscape of America, and different some of those different ideas into our folk tales. And that's what I'm trying to do with my writing is to create stories that have familiar things in different landscapes. Being a storyteller, I think, is in my blood because I got that from my mom. She inspired me to tell stories. And, you know, I work in different mediums. I work in poetry, I work in essay writing, and also playwriting. And no matter what form or what genre I'm using, I feel that I'm always really just telling a story. And I think right now it is so important for us Hmong to remember our stories because how we see ourselves as being Hmong has changed. So it's really important for, I think for myself, to capture that, to capture what was, what is now, and what will be in the future of being Hmong. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.